The Federal Reserve is launching a pilot program of the brand new central bank digital currency in conjunction with 12 major banks. Banks like BNY Mellon, Citi, US Bank, Wells Fargo, and a few others, they are all working together on a 12 week pilot program for the new digital dollar. This program, it is spearheaded by the New York Fed's Innovation Center here. And the New York Fed's Innovation Center is the one that has been researching central bank digital currencies for a while now and periodically make speeches about what they found, what they're looking at, saying, hey, we need Congress to do stuff about this. We want Congress to legislate it. But looks like they are taking a giant step forward. And it is no coincidence this is happening right in the midst of the most epic Ponzi scheme collapse, cryptocurrency failure, probably in history up to this point and probably in the future as well with FTX collapsing right now. Now this article, it's just ridiculous. I have to point this out so you can see it. It says, at a time when consumer confidence for blockchain transactions is at a low, this news highlights the fact that there are still real world use cases for this technology. No, it doesn't. All it does is it proves that they were waiting, just, just looking for the perfect opportunity to take advantage of the fraud that they caused by printing a ton of money and then they allowed by not stopping criminal behavior that's already criminal already, you don't need additional regulation for this, jumping on the chance to impose tyranny and test pilot try it out on unsuspecting citizens. This doesn't mean there's real world use for this. Or I should say that doesn't mean that there is a free market desire or demand for this. Obviously, if they impose this, a lot of people will use it, but that doesn't mean that people would choose to use it if they are given the choice. So we're seeing banks like Citi, HSBC, MasterCard, Wells Fargo, they're all gonna be participating in this experiment. This project is going to be called the Regulated Liability Network. That's a good name for it, as this will probably be a test of the biggest liability for American freedom in our country's history. So the question is, why? Now, obviously, we know the end game with this, and I've made plenty of videos about central bank digital currencies, but the reason why they're doing this particular test is to test how banks using digital dollar tokens in a common database can speed up payments. It will only go for 12 weeks, and at the end of the 12 weeks, they're gonna come together and talk about their findings. When they announced this on Tuesday, they said it would be exploring an interoperable network of central bank, wholesale digital money, and commercial bank digital money operating on a shared multi-entity distributed ledger. The banks will participate in the pilot by issuing tokens and settling transactions through simulated central bank reserves. Now that's a whole lot of jargon, so let's break it down. Interoperable network of central bank wholesale digital money and commercial bank digital money. Really what we have going on here is there's two main layers. In our current financial system, there is the banks and the banks hold the money of the people. Now the banks also have their own money and that's held by the central bank. So the central bank op operates as the bank for the other banks and the banks obviously operate as banks for everybody else. So this is saying same thing just on, you know, kind of a parallel test program with the new currency. And that's indicated right here where it says operating on a shared multi-entity distributed ledger. So we've talked about the differences between a CBDC and something like Bitcoin before. Basically it's a ledger, which is just a list. And so Bitcoin is a public list. Anybody can go and look at all the transactions that have ever taken place. Look at all the wallets that have any amount of Bitcoin in them. It's a public ledger. Anybody who wants to can go see it. A CBDC, just like this is talking about, will be a private ledger. So only select entities and people and groups will have access to view or use the ledger to see the list. And so in this case, it will be the participating banks and the central bank. They will issue tokens and settle transactions through the simulated central bank reserves. So I'm still looking for information about this because as of yet, it's pretty sparse. But what it looks like is this is a test program that individuals will not be participating in. It looks like the banks and the central bank, the Federal Reserve, New York Innovation Center, they're going to be running this pilot program as a test, a simulation next to existing transactions. So it will parallel and it will mimic real transactions, but it will all be contained in their simulation. They're not actually going to be using this and having people participate. 
And the reason why they're doing this is to test the technical feasibility, legal viability, and business applicability of distributed ledger technology. Again, a whole lot of jargon here, so let's break it down. Technical feasibility. That just means, are we smart and capable enough to be able to pull this off? Because it's no, there, it's, it's not a simple task here. And so in order to be able to roll out a CBDC to a population and actually have it work, number one, you just have to be able to get the technical aspects of it down. That's a big feat to accomplish. And so that's, you know, one of the reasons why this is such a big deal because it is very difficult to pull off. And so that's all they're doing with this is just doing that. That's the main thing is just to see, hey, we built this stuff. Does it work in a very small isolated simulation? They're going to be bug testing, basically legal viability. I imagine a lot of this is going to have to do with KYC, anti money, money laundering laws, Patriot Act to see how those kind of laws and regulations will apply to a distributed ledger among the banks, the participating banks in the central bank to see how that information can get processed and kept secure and shared between and potentially make law enforcement easier. I would imagine that that would be the end goal because instead of having a bunch of isolated ledgers that each bank is operating themselves, which is really how they operate right now, and then they do batch settlement at the end of the day, instead of doing all of that, you have one shared ledger that everybody can participate in. It's a lot easier to track transactions, to trace individuals moving money around, to watch for tax evasion, to watch for money laundering happening, to look for terrorist funding and things like that. And so if everybody's using the same ledger, I imagine that that's one of the end goals is to make law enforcement of these things easier, not more complicated. And business applicability. Essentially, does this make sense for us as a business to pursue something like this? And the short answer to that is absolutely it does because a central bank digital currency means that every individual and every institution, every business will have an account directly with the central bank instead of with just a bank. So you bypass the banking layer of the system. It's all centralized. So then the question is, what do the banks do? And the answer is they operate as the plumbing for that financial system. They operate as nodes in that network because they're not essential for banking and deposits anymore, all of that gets transferred to the central bank. And so they now have to just be the infrastructure for the system. So the answer is, of course, there's business applicability here. Otherwise, they cease to exist. And then finally, this is the kicker here. The NY Fed said that the project could potentially be extended to multi-currency operations and regulated stable coins. And like I said at the beginning, in the midst of the most epic collapse and fraud in crypto history, with FTX collapsing and Sam Bankman Freed, you know, potentially on the run, although now it looks like he says he's not on the run and uh, this whole thing unraveling before our eyes. They're saying, hey, this could exist alongside and be extended to regulated stable coins. I've said from the beginning that the reason why they held off from trying to regulate this space is because they knew if they held off long enough, there would be an epic collapse because there was so much money that was available that it attracted so much fraud that they wanted it to collapse so that people would be begging for regulation. Once everything starts to collapse, you attack the people that take the fall, you regulate a few stable coins, and you usher them into the new system alongside the new CBDC. And just in case you doubt how dangerous a central bank digital currency is, regarding the current test that they are starting, this 12-week test, they said programmable US dollars may be necessary to support new business models and provide a foundation to much needed innovations in financial settlements and infrastructure. Projects like this could be expanded to take a broader view of the opportunity. At the end of the day, central bank digital currencies are programmable money. It means that whoever is in control of that money can program how it works. They can cause any transaction they want to happen. They can stop any transaction they want from happening. They can reverse any transaction that has already taken place. They can credit your account with $1,000 and say, spend it in the next 30 days or you lose it. They can credit your account with money and say it can only be spent at businesses that are owned by certain groups. 
based on any category we decide. They can say there are people hoarding X, Y, and Z, so we're instituting a new tax to make that item more expensive to drive down demand. They can impose limits on spending of anything, saying once you hit a certain amount spending on these categories, you're cut off for the rest of the month. This money is programmable and the extent of the tyranny only stops at the will of the one in control. And the more power a tool like this has, the more power hungry people it attracts. So here's to hoping that that technical feasibility portion that they're testing out falls flat on its face and they realize how incompetent they are in the face of some of these complex issues and they can't get it up on their feet. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.